motion that we accept the minutes from our December meeting. Second that. All in favor? I do. Second? Yes. We'll say it so you can hear it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First thing on the agenda is a continued hearing. No, it's not. It's not the here. Bill. Charlie said the here. Long Bill. Long Bill? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there they are. Okay. Let's hear from them. Uh, before we open the meeting, I see that we are, again, missing two members here. Yeah. So we're concerned about um, those members missing two meetings um, and not being able to vote. So we were wondering if we could maybe, if we're waiting for the other members, maybe take us out of order. Are they expected to come tonight? No, I don't believe so. No, they're ill. So. Um, we have a quorum. We do have a quorum, but then we would then need a super major. We need all three votes in the future. We wouldn't have the benefit of having a, a full I, board. I have so. trouble hearing you when you go down. Yep, I understand. So we wouldn't have the benefit of having the full board if the two members uh, miss two meetings. So um, let me, if I could have a minute just to confer with my client here. Just to, oh, uh, sure, go ahead. Can we take something out of order? We can, we can just continue right on with the, yeah. with the agenda. Yeah, given that the other board members, this would be their second uh, missed meeting, we'd ask for a continuance to the to the next meeting. Okay. Um, are you at that next meeting? Are you going to have uh, an updated wetland uh, uh, map? And will all departments that you deal with have the same map to deal with, not not different maps like you like we have now? Right now, we only have one filing right now with the Conservation Commission. And that's the only filing that we have before the town. Aren't you with the stormwater as well? We're not. Yesterday, we um, met informally with the Stormwater Commission to discuss uh, potential future plans to, so they didn't feel left out. So we wanted to bring them up to speed just like we told this board um, that once we've um, gotten in order of conditions here, the next step is we would go to the planning board uh, with a revised design, and then based off of some input there, come back to this board. So uh, that's what we're still planning on doing. Now, I saw a map from yesterday, which is different from the map that you had originally given us. That's correct, yep. So that, is a preliminary design plan and it's going to be it's a preliminary design we haven't designed or fully uh, filed that with anybody uh, I would like to say whatever you're going to do uh, for the future I'd like to see what whether it's preliminary or not at least in large amounts pretty fairly accurate so we can deal with it so we don't have to come back to it uh, year after year uh, because there's, there's alterations uh, and it would probably be to your advantage to make sure that you have it done well so that the uh, other boards or uh, commissions have the same thing and, and we can move right through it uh, uh, in an accurate manner. That's, that's not what's before you now. We may never go to the planning board 
and with that plan. That's a conceptual plan. It's got nothing to do with what's before you now. We're here before you with the original subdivision plan, a delineation, a drainage design, and we're seeking to have the order of conditions issued based on that. Whatever happens in the future is going to happen in the future, but it's got nothing to do with what's before you now. When the time is correct, we will bring that before you, if the time ever comes that we do. Okay. But that's not what's that's not what we're, we're that's not what we're presenting. That's not what we're act, asking for your action on. Okay. That's got nothing to do with what's going on here tonight. Can I nothing. present Todd's letter for the record now that we're already talking about it? No, I'd, I'd rather no, no, no. I, I don't. I, if, the, if the commission, me? you if the, cannot make that so, decision. Uh, if, the uh, I, if the commission hasn't requested that that letter be issued, if you haven't directed anybody to issue oh. that letter, Excuse that letter me. should not be entered. Well, we don't into the want record. to take any testimony. We, we just want to continue because um, we want to the boards. All right. This I would. This has to be become, become part of the record because it was reviewed by the stormwater agent. The plan we have, which is the one you sent to me, not the plan you gave to the stormwater committee. The plan we have was reviewed by the stormwater agent and he asked me to make it part of the record. So Excuse me. Yeah. We're, asking for, we're, asking, we're asking for a continuance. Yeah. Nothing should be entered into the record. Well, tonight. then we'll do it next month. Okay. Yeah. I motion then that we uh, take under advisement the applicant's request to continue this hearing until our February 17th meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You all have a copy of the Thank letter. You. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Joshua Glass. No, that's continued. That is also continued. The Reed Brothers is continued. Yeah. Got to read them all. We have, to, we have to, a motion on that. Yeah. yeah. I move that we continue the uh, subdivision off of Forest Street called Forest Hills until our 217 meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Reed Brothers. They Don't keep going, Jim. They okay, I make a motion that we continue that hearing until 217. Reed Brothers? Uh, Reed Brothers. For the record, I just want to make it known that they are waiting on Army Corps. They okay. have reached out to Army Corps yep. and they're waiting on Army Corps. Okay, so second? Second, yes. Oh, go ahead. Your turn. We a motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Notice of intent request from Ross Bolsarelli, 170 Beach Street. Not here? No. Okay. Uh, I move that we continue this hearing until our February 17th meeting. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Another continued hearing. Notice of intent. Simon's uh. construction. Right. So what's happening there is we're waiting for the health agent to issue his comment actually the the engineering firm to address the health agents comments so we've got 10 no one's here on them no okay. i told him he didn't have to come okay then we'll just uh i move that we continue the hearing for simon construction and materials until our 217 meeting i'll second that motion all in favor aye aye continues wow. most we go motion con motion passes uh, request uh, an RDA from properties at 3423 Shop Slot Road. Repair a failed septic system. And I told them they didn't have to come as well because they're waiting on uh, getting additional wetlands flagged. Okay, so they're, they're, okay, I move that we continue the hearing until our 217 meeting. Second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, motion passes. Oh boy. 
Another continued hearing. That's going to be some meeting on the 17th. Yeah. Notice of intent request from Michael Binder. Binder states. Where, where's Michael? Hey, get up here. We've got somebody here on the, <coughs> on the agenda. This is where I recuse myself. I'm recusing myself for this project, remember? Brook Street, this okay. This is the project I'm recusing myself for, if you read through the emails. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Ms. Uh, members of the commission. This is My name is Brian Dunn with MBL Land Development and Permitting. And as Lisa uh, just described to you, the, the record to note, she's recusing herself. Out of the world. Um, room before we continue our presentation. <clears throat> Lisa, they wish for you to leave the room. I have a little trouble hearing you, Michael Bender. No, my name is Brian Dunn. I'm the principal of MBL Land Development and Permitting. Can you hear me so far? Uh, yes, I can. Okay. And, and, and your name is? Brian Dunn. Brian Dunn. And with me the, to my left is uh, Tracy Duart. She's the civil engineer of record. And Mike Bender is in the room. He's the applicant uh, to, my, to the left behind me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, this is a... Uh, continued public hearing for a single family house lot. The house, the house itself, the septic system, the drive, most of the driveway, probably 90% of the driveway is outside the 100 foot buffer zone, the bordering vegetated wetlands or isolated wetlands, whichever way you want to call it. Um, we, originally was, we, re, we originally had a four lot subdivision on this parcel of land. We went to the stormwater committee and they weren't too much in favor of promoting a four lot subdivision. So we're down to a one lot house on this five acres of land. We have approximately 374 square feet of floodplain, 374 square feet a floodplain that we are altering for the proposed driveway that is located on the on the plan and the land that you have in front of you. 374 square feet. Very de minimis area. We are also replicating that flood storage that we're altering to the tune of 533 square feet of alter of uh, replication of that floodplain. So really, any order of conditions associated with this project is really associated with the driveway. It has yes. nothing to do with the house placement, the septic system, uh, the grading around the house, all of it outside the 100 foot buffer zone. We understand that your agent has recused herself from reviewing this project. And it is my understanding through emails, through the chairman, that you wish to have this project go out to peer review. Is that still the case? I, I, I had trouble hearing that. It was my understanding that you would like this project to be peer reviewed. Yes. Okay. So if that's the case and we're going to go along with that, okay. I, want you to, I want to make sure that you can hear me clearly. Yeah, I can. Okay. We should, have been, we should have been notified day one that Lisa was going to recuse herself from this project. However, we were not. We were delayed two months. We were told at the last hearing that when we would come here tonight 
after, after Lisa spoke to town council in regards to her recusing herself, that we would come here and get an order of conditions tonight. Hold on for a second. I just want to continue what I'm saying. With those facts in mind, and we're a small buffer zone project of 374 square feet, nothing major. This isn't the Prudential Tower. It's a single family house driveway that we're trying to permit. I request if we go with the peer review, we will pay the $2,000 up front. We will expect the peer review letter within one week. We will make any revisions to the plans that prior week. And we expect that the, the order of conditions be drafted by that peer review consultant and ready for your signature on your next meeting in February. We do not want to be delayed anymore for a single family home with 374 square feet of alteration. Mr. Chairman. I don't think we can, uh, we can't guarantee one week time or anything with- One month, he says. No, he said one week to, oh, to, I to see get a letter yeah, from okay. the peer review. It, it might take uh, uh, longer than that, but I, I want to go that, back that to- was, That was, if I may, I, if I may, that was what was explained to me in an email that would, would come. That was what would happen. We would hire the peer review. Yeah. We'd come with the funds tonight. They would be engaged. The funds would be deposited to 53G account, and we would have a letter within one week. Steve Schmeel said he would be able to handle it. Uh, okay. All right. Okay. But it, you have a check tonight? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, as soon as the uh, 53G is, is uh, set, He'll start work. Okay. Well, as, as okay. far as we're concerned, Mr. Mr. Binder's here. He's more than willing to work with you. We're, okay. we're willing to work with you as well. However, we do not wish to be delayed any further for this small alteration of floodplain. It's 374 square feet. Okay. Uh, you got the idea that you were, we were going to get an order of conditions tonight, and it probably came from me. You're... Uh, you put pressure on Lisa to act as the agent and not be a, um, um, you know, to, to recluse herself. And, uh, uh, and that's what delayed it because when she went to town council and wherever else she went, uh, that, and she got the idea that no, she shouldn't be, regardless of what you were saying. And there's the month's delay. And I can understand we're, we're willing to work with you and get it done as I, quickly as I, possible. I, I appreciate that. And I, and I think that the, the, we, didn't, we, we were stating the facts at the last meeting about her recusing herself or not recusing herself. You, as the commission, asked her to go to town council. She did I think not, you did. No, no, no. You, you, the commission did. I didn't ask her to go to town council. She, you asked her to call and speak to town council in regards to her recusing herself. Was it you? She, I didn't. Someone in this commission I that didn't. was here. I didn't. And so, so I'm sure I, it was you that said to go to town council and uh, and to uh, get the approval. And I, I would have never gone and said, said go to town council. Well, I know I didn't. And uh, no. Nope. Okay. All right. Matter. It doesn't matter at this point. We're. I think we're on the uh, right track that we'll get uh, Charlie will uh, make a call tomorrow and we'll get things going as quickly as Perfect. possible. And I think that going, going uh, in the future, we do a lot of business in the town of Dighton. She has done a lot of work for MBL Land Development and a lot of the clients that I have, that we have, that have been very good to the town of, of Dighton over the years. And I want to make sure that if we come back in and my plans come into this town, that we are not delayed like this again. We, it cannot be delayed. It can't be because of a business relationship that was over a year ago that, that, a, that a person wants to develop a, a parcel of land be delayed two months for something so small. Now, we won't have an order of conditions possibly until February 17th. Then there's an appeal period, so he can't really start anything 
until sometime in March now, instead of allowing the good weather that we have to construct a single family home. So I, I came here with the, the inclination that originally that we were gonna get an order of conditions tonight. She was gonna go to town council. She didn't go to town council. She went to the ethics commission based on her conversation with the ethics commission. She made a decision that she was gonna have to recuse herself. Fine, we're going down another route. We expect that the commission follow through with that request. Please. Yes, Thank you they, very much. I move that uh, uh, we ask the applicant to put funds into a 53G account and continue the hearing until 217. I'll second that, but we already have uh, uh, a consultant on uh, Okay, but, but we got to accept yes. their right. We got to accept their with, with the understanding that any special conditions in any and the order of conditions be ready to be signed on the 17th. Please. Charlie? Yes. Thank you. There's no hindrance now. We have a consultant. He'll do his work. Uh, you'll get an order of conditions by the next meeting. Perfect. Okay. February 17th. Yes, February 17th. Very good. Thank you very much. All right, wait. Hang on a second, please. There's a, a woman with a question. Uh, you got, got a call for a, a vote on it. I thought I, we I did. made the motion. Charlie seconded. Okay, all in favor of this. All right. Issue so, uh, excuse condition. me, Mr. Chairman, Charlie, uh, there's the members of the public would like to speak. So you have, we haven't closed the public hearing. No. We haven't officially continued it. You haven't voted to continue it. So if the public wants to speak, please let, let them speak now. My name is Nancy Goulart, I'm chairman of the Stormwater Committee. Yes, they did come before us. It wasn't that we didn't look favorably on it. They wanted waivers in order to construct the whole number of homes they wanted. <clears throat> this is the first thing I've heard about this since we had the Stormwater Committee meeting. My first question is how many square feet of disturbance will there be in the building of this home? None, no wetlands disturbance. Not my question total number of square feet of property disturbed to do everything you want to do. Doesn't matter if it's dry well, wet or anything. Things, and, I mean, I can double check, but I did check for the stormwater permit requirement. I need to know the number of square feet that will be disturbed. Relative to the comments about going to town council, any town employee, volunteer, or appointee who has a question is automatically referred to the State Ethics Commission. Because number one, they have the attorney of the day who's the expert, and number two, we don't pay for it. Town Council does not give opinions on conflict of interest. So the meeting you're talking about, I saw it. I didn't see it come from the board, and I will leave it at that. The only other thing I need to know from a stormwater perspective is total number of square feet that will be disturbed on this property because it will, in effect, determine whether or not you will have to come back to the Stormwater Committee. So if you can get that information to Mrs. Grassy at the Board of Health, that'll be helpful to us because if it's 35,000 square feet or more, we will notify you to come to our meeting, which happens to be the night before their meeting, the day before their meeting. Marsh Joyce, by the way, 399 Brook Street, I'm on the bummer. What I'd like to point out to the board is that within 150 yards of this project is a priority habitat under on the uh, National Heritage Plans. I have copies of the plans here if you need to see them. No, we're good. We know the habitat. Well, we I know the area, and I'm sure these guys are, are these people do also uh, okay 150 and that, the question then becomes a priority habitat within that proximity are there animals traveling back and forth what should, what should we guess at that or can you give us some information it, it would um, 
be logical that there would be a number of vertebrates, invertebrates traveling back and forth between the wetlands on the project and the priority habitat. And they should have a corridor at least. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking for help. Contacted, um, Stephen Schmidt. Okay, uh, he can do. He can look that up and. Yes, he will. Okay, so John, yeah. I did. I jotted it down. Okay. Okay, we'll Thank have you. that looked into by the peer review. Wonderful. Uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, just want to reiterate: this property is not located in a natural heritage zone, does not require a MISA certificate or an application. Okay. That's what we're going to have the peer review look into. It's, in a, it's actually, so, it's actually so, in our notice of intent. It's, we have a figure that actually shows what the habitat is. We are not in that habitat. Thank you. Anyone else wishes to speak? Okay, uh, I'll move that we continue the hearing until 217. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 217. Motion passes. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I wasn't going to go outside, so. Too cold. Yeah. You have a check in here. Are those tires? Okay. You all set, you guys? No, with no. The we will do the other conditions. Right. Okay. Thank you, Chief. That's what I meant. Yes. Okay. Okay. Why well, I can't hear anything you say? No. Uh, the peer review will do the order of conditions. You will write up the order of conditions. Who's, who's the order? Schmiel. Who? Schmiel. What's next? Okay. Uh, Stonegate. Notice of intent. Easy one. Oh wait. Well, Stonegate Landing. Oh. Stonegate Landing. Stonegate Landing. I can't see it. Your name, sir? Gentlemen, how are you? I'm Richard Federoff. I'm Richard? Pre yeah, President of Stonegate Landing, LLC. Richard, um, the, the last name's very easy to spell, so I won't bother spelling it for you. <laughs> Your last name? Fedorov. Spell it. F E O D O R O F F. Get it right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my name was Ivan Denisovich Fedorov, but my mom changed it. Right. All right. <laughs> no, that's not true. Um, Gentlemen, I'm uh, Rich Fedorov, um, so we get landing right over here. Um, I was here a couple of months ago. Um, we filed uh, for a notice of intent uh, for construction of a single family home on lot 37 Stonegate Landing. And before I go any further, I, I need to give Lisa some documents. If it's Please okay. do. Um, this is a, we did get it. Yes, uh, I just looked it up. Yeah. You want to just read it out loud for the record what the file number is? What's that? You want to read it out loud for the record so everybody knows what the file number is? Okay. Yes, the letter says Commonwealth Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. Notification is stated uh, January 4th, 2022. Notica notification of the Wetlands Protection Act file. The Department of Environmental Protection has received notice of intent to file in accordance with Wetland Protection Act. Stonegate Landing LLC, um, so just the property of Stonegate Landing, Lot 37, here in Dyke, Mass. They've issued the number SE0170452. Do you have 
copies of plans for the guys to look at? Yeah. You gave them I to them? To that part. Okay. What was the last three numbers on the... Uh, no, no copies of the plans. I'll take that. Oh. It's... 17 dash what? 0452. Okay. Can continue? Do you have plans? Do you have plans? plans? Or do you want me to give them mine? I can give them mine. Okay. You just have the one? I have another one. Okay. Uh, go down um, Center Street, and it's on the right hand side with the two uh, stone walls further okay. down. And, and this is the one with, where there was uh, um, uh, okay, where, where's the locus on this? I, I, that's what I was looking for when yeah. I asked you where the hell. Yeah, um, this is going to be the drive point in. Could you give us some orientation on this? Um, I, I, I've been there so many times, but I don't know. Okay, all right, here, Bill. So that, well, that's the first house lot on the right. No, it's up here. Oh, oh okay, it's the detention base. Oh, okay, I know what this one is. Yeah. This is where it drops off. Uh, it's high and then it drops off right It's quickly. on the west side of the okay. Stonegate Landing Roadway, and it's just north of that access that goes into the power lines. Okay. So it's the intersection of that unbuilt road. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You, if, okay, so you're going in, it's up there on the left. Yeah. And there's a playground near there, too. Um, the playground's quite a ways away. Okay, but it's, all right. But um, this lot is, you know, um, Stonegate Green. Yeah, okay, there. no, I, 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 I'm f very familiar with it. Okay. I've been up there so many times, but I just had to know which lot. Can we just reiterate for the record? You are, it's a 40B, so you've received exemptions as far as zoning, so you don't have to meet the Wetlands Protection Act. However... No, you have to meet the Wetland Protection, but not the bylaw. It, right, right. Sorry. Good correction. So, in, in speaking with Mr. Federoff, we've determined that, you know, he may not have come on other lots, but he's going to come on the rest of the lots that he needs to. Okay, so your request then is? Um, the question is, on the, um, on the permit for the comprehensive, we were not, we overrode the zoning act, okay? But um, it also asked us in the permit to try the best we could to leave at least the 25 foot no cut zone, okay? One of the lots we talked about a few weeks ago, there wasn't, we couldn't quite do that. But this one, you can see we're leaving a clear 25-foot buffer zone. The limit of the clarity will be the, uh, the red breaking line, and that is 25 feet from the uh, flag wetland areas. Okay. This is, yeah. Okay, so you're not going to... All right, so... Um, the lot's a little tight so, on the right side behind the house, but you can yeah. see it widens to the left, and so... We can stay out of that 25-foot zone. And yet and your so, building is still going to be 50 feet away from the wetlands, at least 50 feet. Uh, the building itself, yeah, because we got 25 feet, we're 55 feet away from yeah. them. And we, we have a no-cut zone. Um, Lisa and I walked it the other day, and uh, we're going to wrap this sill fence right around it. It's flagged with blue and white flags, and... We should be able to do everything and, and, and deliver a good, decent backyard and, and be able to maintain that distance without, okay. without any trouble on this lot. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I had I, them I, flag the limit, the 25 foot, okay. and stake out the house. Now, on your other lots, we had you put uh, permanent markers in the ground? Yeah. Um, one lot in particular, we have put big boulders behind the house, so they have to get a machine in there to get them out of there, so they won't crouch. But that was close. 
This one here, um, you know, we can, you know, it, it's, everything's going away, and you know, the secret here is uh, proper grading and sending every, everything towards the paper street that's there, fairway uh, landing. Um, I'm not sure we need permanent markers on this, but that would be your call, <laughs> you know. Um, we I, like we, it, we we like to make sure the people that live there are going to know where the boundary lines are for ever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, you know, a good permanent marker, concrete or stone. I mean, I could. In the ground is is uh, is a I good idea. Be, on the other one, we're so close. We're putting big rocks so no one touch them. But I could do a stone gates are probably a name. I have plenty of big rocks over there. Okay, and maybe. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I would want to build a tall wall because some people, but I could put a markers back there and, uh, and, and reference that, you know, to, with the buyer and, and tell them they yeah. don't go any further it's, without following the contract. What about a contract. short fence of some sort? Would you be amenable to that? Please, I'm sorry, I, I can't How see. about a short fence of some sort? A short sort? fence? Yeah. Well, short fences are easy to jump over. <laughs> you know, um, I'm not worried you know, about that. Permanent markers of stone of some kind okay. would, would, would do it. You know, that's just mentally mm -hmm. a, a, a barrier. Yeah. Okay. And, and also, in, you know, of course, in the uh, deed, we'll re reference this plan, and I'll make sure the customer gets it, and it goes to my PNS, and I'll do the best I can to keep them out of there. Okay. okay. So whatever you put in there. Whatever you use for markers ought to be high enough so you can't run over it with a lawnmower. Well, that's a, that's very doable, sir. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't have. Any, I don't have. I'm, I'm all set. I'm all set too. Audience, asking. You. Well, I will when I'm look. I'm looking to see if Charlie's all set. He said yes. He did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to speak on this particular project? I think okay. that fellow wanted to speak in favor, sir. He's just a little bashful. You know, but just let him know he's good with me, okay? Okay. okay. I, I move that we uh, close the hearing and issue an order of conditions for uh, Stonegate Landing. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Motion carries. Request for a determine of acclimability from Michael Rodriguez. Oh, Michael, am I done? where are you? I'm referring to okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, Michael, you got to scream out. You're not Michael. Oh, sorry. No, I'm Ray Francisco. I'm the engineer. Ray? Yes. Ray. This is for the app. Ray Francisco. Yep. Yeah, there goes to Lisa. Lisa. What? One of the permanent marker when we get that far. I'm sure when I come out with we'll it. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at it together. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll leave you that tomorrow. Oh, no. This is a single farm, single family home, new construction. Lot 2A on Smith Street. Okay. Uh, there's a um, boarding vegetated wetland off to, on another property to the north. Uh, and there's a uh, flagged um, wetland uh, to the west as well. Okay, <clears throat> Slow down just a little bit. I'm sure thing. Find, I'm trying to find out where we are on Smith. Um, remember where I used to live? Yeah. Goggins property across the street. Goggins property across the street with the with the cemetery. Yeah. But if you keep heading north, it's part of Goggins land. Before Stephen Gil with Stephen Gil Don't Gilbert left. I know where we are now. Yeah. Okay. This is the west, Excellent. West side of the street. <laughs> Street is over here. 
Okay. This is Smith Barton's down there. Yeah. It's just, just a hundred foot okay. buffer zone. You just squeeze that septic system in. Yes. Yeah, so the sept so the house, the septic, uh, and the driveway are all outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Easements We're filing an RDA um, oh, because oh, there is okay. some grading associated okay. with the septic system that. that will cross over the 100 foot wetland, 100 foot uh, buffer zone. He's explaining things to us. Okay. So, so uh, the house, the septic system, the driveway will all be outside the 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, there is some grading work associated with the septic system that will be within the 100 foot buffer zone of the offsite vegetated wetland. Um, but it will not be within the within the 50 foot setback of that wetland. So, I um, had Ray do a few things, um, including label the wetlands as what they are: um, the isolated vegetated wetland, and then the BBW, which is contiguous with a culvert that goes under Smith Street. Um, so then um, I had him add the 25 foot no touch and the 50 foot no build um, to the isolated wetland as well. Um, and I also um, just noted that the flags in the rear of the site, which is flags 28 through 36, there were no flags hung there. So, um, you know, the project is yeah, not right. allowed to actually go do anymore like this is there's a restriction on this lot right I'm not according sure. to the planning board okay, I believe I so because it says not to be further subdivided oh okay okay um because it's a retreat it's lot. A, right as a retreat lot, yeah but you meant something with it had to do with the wetlands okay and then um I had a conversation with Mr. Pilling the health agent because um you know I want to make sure he's reviewing these before we approve them to make sure the septic systems are all set so we don't have to keep going back and forth. Um, he hasn't had a chance to review this yet, but Mr. Francisco is here with the understanding that if anything moves closer to the wetland, he'd have to come back before us. But um, the only all, thing all, I, all the perk tests are are further away from the wetland. Uh, actually, Todd did review this. I have a, an email from January 10th from, from Brad, the design engineer. He did talk to Todd about this. Okay. I don't know, it's everything so busy, maybe Todd didn't realize which lot it was, so we're yeah. pretty confident that once he takes a look at it, yeah. he'll remember that conversation. Okay, good. And, and hopefully I have no further comments. And if he does, we'll address them. Yeah. So there was one item, though, that isn't, I didn't see was addressed, was the 50-foot setback. I wanted something like to demarcate that. And I realize only a small portion of that, well, you know, 50 foot no, no build back here along the IBW and then the 50 foot um, like from the BBW. Yeah, right, well, that's, those are pretty far away. <laughs> right. There's not really much work proposed anywhere near that in the back. Yeah. yeah. We're over 100 feet from it. But you know what happens when they get in and then they want to clear, we could put a marker clear their the yard. We could put a marker. Like, yeah, that's that's what I mean. Okay. I mean, um, so that's outside the they have or you know, some sort of demarcation. Um, so if you want, we can discuss it, and then I'll put it in the conditions. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll be okay with the marker. Okay. I mean, we all, don't we don't have like our own markers like some towns do. All four of your test pits uh, were passed. Yeah, yes, yeah, so there were two, uh, well, they parked two of them, and the two were observations, and there were two minutes per inch on the two. Okay. I don't have anything. I mean, he's pretty good. He's yeah. just he's trying to right. work the mounding here in the buffer zone. He's okay. Audience. I will. I'm waiting. He's on. Yeah. On this particular project, anybody here? No. Okay. I move that we issue a negative determination for this project and it is to be constructed as designed. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you.
Thank you. Oh, thank you. <coughs> and did you have proof of payment of that bill? Did you give it to him already? You did, I mean, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. good. I have a copy with me. Oh. Okay. Um, no, that's fine. Okay. Thank you. If you email that, that's good. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Here's something that I always say. Are they draining wetlands by doing that? No. They're, they're improving drainage. It's a, it's a, okay. Mosquito control. Okay. You guys talking about uh, Mosquito control. Oh, hell Lisa, me. I'm going to put this okay. unless you want this. Um, no, you can have it. So this is the next item. I ended up with two cards. All right. All right, if you want to take it out, because I ended up with an extra copy. Does anyone want to see some information on mosquito control in the town? So as everybody knows, we have West Nile and Dighton, so it has been found. Um, but the Bristol County Mosquito Control Project is working um, to help eliminate the mosquitoes in town. So there's two projects. The plans are in Get back it. Yeah. Okay. Control. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. That's why I gave them to you because it's two separate projects. Where's the other one I gave? They both have it. Yeah. It's All okay. we gotta do is put pages and they'll find it. Yeah, but I only have one. Well, anyway. All right, so you, you keep that one. I've uh, yeah. Okay. I, I've walked along with them when they did the the work down on County Street. Okay. I know how so, they do it and what they do. But for the record, I would like to read their letter okay. uh, so everybody understands what's happening. Um, I'll just get there. <coughs> All right. So Diana Brennan uh, from Bristol County Mosquito Control Project emailed me, and this letter was dated on January 4th. Um, the Bristol County Mosquito Control Project is proposing a ditch maintenance project on the property, a property within your town. Before we move ahead on this project, we seek input and advice regarding the project and any concerns you have regarding it. We do not wish to proceed with any project if there are legitimate concerns from you regarding the work. Our goal is to restore the ditch to the original ditch dimensions in order to provide adequate water flow. This will help to alleviate some mosquito breeding in the area and help the water to flow more freely. We are interested in being as environmentally sensitive as possible in the areas in which we work. Some trees and shoves may need to be removed in order to allow access for the low ground pressure machine. Spoil from the ditch will be spread evenly in the upland or removed from the site. Our experience shows that within one growing season the work area returns to a vegetated state that is attractive. The Bristol County Mosquito Control Project will be conducting a water management project in the city of Di in the city slash town of Dighton in compliance with Mass General Laws 252. The location of this work is at 2682 Elm Street. We plan to remove vegetation and debris which are blocking an existing drainage ditch. Spoils will be spread evenly in the upland. Our target commencement date is 2-4-2022. The project is listed in our files as Project DI22-015. If you have any questions or concerns regarding this work, please feel free to contact me at the above number. If I do not hear from you within 30 days, we will proceed with the project as planned. Sincerely, Diana Brennan, Wetland Coordinator. Um, so yeah, this first one's on Mr. Carr's property on Elm Street. And then the second one is off of Pleasant. Let me pull it up. I'll pull up. 2696 Pleasant Street. Yeah, okay. So that, you know, and both of these projects are exempt from us having to make any determination. Okay. Well, you know, it's good that, that they inform us because if we get calls, uh, uh, the call, first of all, the call will come into you. And then you can just say that's an exempt project and, and, and with our approval, with yeah. our knowledge. Yeah. Uh, unlike some of the work in the past that's been done on the river and we have no clue and we have to go down and make a, uh, <laughs> yeah. an inspection. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you want to ask if anybody has any questions. Or... I will once we... Once we I'm also, that's just mosquito control. Yeah. Now we 
All set. All set. Okay, anybody like to speak about the project that Mosquito Control has? Okay. I'll entertain a motion. No. Well, I'll, is there a motion? Uh, no. There's, there's not, they're not asking us anything. There's no motion. They're telling us. Yeah. Informing us. All right. There's a request to issue a certificate of compliance at 1605 Wheeler Street. Is anybody here with that? 1605 Wheeler? No, they, they didn't need to come. Um, I did a site inspection last week with the owner, and I'm satisfied uh, with the work. It's all stabilized. The coir logs are in place. Uh, they might just leave them there to decompose. They're just straw wattles, actually. They what? Straw wattles. Okay. Uh, but the site stabilized. This was just a septic repair, and I have a certificate of compliance. Okay. You guys want to sign it tonight? Well, let's let me make the motion yeah. first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see if it passes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay. I move that we issue a certificate of compliance to the residents of 1605 Willow Street. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We'll do that. Okay. Brandon, you're next. We haven't seen Brandon in quite a while. Are you lucky? It's good to see you, Brandon. Good to see you too. Brandon Fanna, FICO System Solutions, Warwick, Rhode Island. Representing the Francos. Representing the Francos. Where are the Francos? There they are. Right there. So, okay, Brandon. Okay, so we have an enforcement order to deal with. All right. And we're dealing with it. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the update. Yeah, pretty. We, uh, we did the wetland delineation, and there is an isolated wetland behind that house in the patio that they created. Yeah. You didn't yeah. Uh, You've got a print. Sorry, Brandon. That's all right. Gotta be careful about what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Isolated wetland. Isolated wetland. She got any pictures or a map or anything? Have we do any? Not not yet, but we're working on that. So we have we have it delineated. Uh, we want to uh, do a, an aerial survey with a drone because. The, the aerial photos that are available online go back to 2019, which obviously aren't going to line up with what we see today. So we're going to fly a drone over the property to get a up to the minute, you know, recent aerial survey that we can make maps out of so you can see what's going on. And from there, um, we're going to come up with some form of restoration plan. Um, and that's what I'd like to start a conversation with the commission about because okay. there has been some weeping and gnashing of teeth. This has some what? Weeping and gnashing of teeth oh, yeah. as of late regarding, uh, the, how the Francos were issued a building permit. So they moved forward in good faith that they could do this work, but then were stopped afterwards you know so that that is what it is and i want to we're going to deal with it but the question is is now that this patio is in and they got the building permit for it and most likely this patio uh, incurred into the 25 foot no touch zone what can we do about it anyway while still keeping it is it a patio or is it going to be something else Let's see, you can't, Lisa. 
is it a patio or something else? Like, what is the end result? What is, is it, because we never saw the building permit originally. So, okay, well, we never saw the plan. I don't have that answer right now. If the Francos want to answer, but I, I've, I've, uh, I, I've consulted them to just observe and, and report it for tonight. Okay. So we, I, I, I can continue to, to communicate well, with Lisa about that. We can't, we can't, we can't. If you want to speak to us, please come up here so we can hear. You, you are, you are. My name is Mandy Suplo. I am Frank and Cecile's daughter. Mean, and and this my, is Mr. Franco. This is my dad. Franco. Yep, Mr. Franco. Okay. So my parents were advised that it was okay to tear down the four sheds on their property and replace it with one. They did that, and that's what they're doing. It's a prefabbed garage. So the slab was poured in good faith that we were going down the right road, and that is not what happened. So as what soon happened? As I poured the slab, then I got the registered letter. From you people. Well, that's how we found out about it. By the building inspector, the Porter Slab Commissioner, and then come see him, and he give me the building per the permit. I did everything oh. just the way he told me to do it, and I put it exactly where, it, and it's uh, 30 by 35 is the size. Okay, I think Brand Brandon it will, will be coming with a solution for you. Correct. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. not happy. This was a punch below the belt, you know what I mean? Well, that, unfortunately, that is two departments that yeah, we're, 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 that's we're in communication with each other. Yeah, that's a definitely a town issue, yes. Yeah, they, they got to straighten it out. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm Mr. sure Franco. this is going to lead in that direction. I hope so, because I don't want to see anybody else have to go well, through I don't either. I mean, this is... You got these people over here, you got the kids before us. The town doesn't have their shit together, we know that. Okay, Brandon. But so, you, this, uh, this is probably the first time we've used a drone to. to uh, yeah, this has been something I've been doing as of late. Really? And, uh, yeah, usually when in situations like this, where, where I have to show some kind of existing condition that would not necessarily show up on an aerial photograph that the state ran you know three years ago and it, it helps everybody to visualize what is there and what could be done as opposed to looking at an, you know interesting oh yeah you i think you like it okay. but but we had i think there's gonna hopefully be some compromise here given the situation you just heard about and that we can move forward with something to make all parties happy. I know that there was uh, a lot of junk on site that's been cleaned up already, and we would continue to clean things up and perhaps plant and, and overall make it a, a better situation than it was before. And you're going to do that, and that sounds fine. We're, we're making lemonade out of lemons. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to do. Sounds good. Good. Okay, so when will we see your pl uh, plan? You'll be seeing it for the next meeting. Okay. And, I'll, and I'll be getting to Lisa, hope, knock on wood, in the next two weeks. Okay, so um, if this... Uh, okay, it's, uh, I don't know if there's anything here to continue or anything. It's just... Uh, well, you have to... Yeah, we have to yeah, get it's, a it's, it's an enforcement order at this yeah. point, so uh -huh. we'll just we'll just. Yeah. So we will look them. look for your import on in the next meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. So can I clean up? Can I do any clean up here, or are we still can <clears throat> Jesus Christ, he's a pain. Brandon's going to work pretty quickly to get it done for you. Yeah, can be. He said by the next meeting, which is really quickly compared to some of the guys we're working with. Yeah, so, so I'll tell you I something mean, later. Yeah, you don't have this, to. At this point, there's not going to be an engineered site plan. There's going to be this new aerial photograph, me using Arc, Arc GIS, okay. and creating a map from that. It's not going to be stamped, but being a, a kind of a restoration deal at the moment, 
Maybe it'll be acceptable to you. Maybe after you see it, you say, well, I'd feel better with a, a stamp plan, but that's the direction we're going. Okay. We'll see what your level of comfort is. It is a garage and a floodplain. It what? It's a garage and a floodplain. A boat Okay. A boathouse. Just a, a shell. It's just a shell, like a concert. Yeah. And it's got the boats in it. No utilities, nothing in there. It's on a cement slab. That's it. Okay, um, but the one thing I do want to, to consider is the number of structures that were removed in the flood zone mm -hmm. versus what's there. Right. So well, those were my father's. Right. So. Well, we can take some of that into consideration. We're both, we yeah. will. That's good. All right. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Drive safe. Lisa, you uh, you talked to him before, right? <laughs> On a, Oh, we can't do that now. What? This is an order of conditions we issued in 2010 for your, I guess it was your dad. Oh, was, it was it your, No, he died. Was it your brother? This was my brother. Yeah. Take it home and read it. He yeah. had cancer. He, he was I sick understand. for a uh, But take it home and read it. Read, it. read the conditions that are in the back, and you'll see why we acted. Uh, wow. There's a perpetual condition that was issued in that order that required... Uh, your dad or grandfather for you My to file no, a his uncle. before he did anything else. Yeah. And that's why when we acted the way we did, it didn't work out very well. Well, he had it rented yeah. out to so, Alan Reckitt was right. Yeah, place. he put in the septic system at that time. Not in 2010. 2010. I put one in, Proline put one in for me. Yeah. The Tava Construction put Pro -line. in. I put one for two places, the trailer and the toilet okay. and where I am. That's order condition that was issued that way. Yeah, you, you can go over that and, and, and understand what, what's required. Uh, what we did, why we did it, and uh, I think everybody would be able to we, just, we do want to be clear. This is nothing against the commission. It's no. nothing against Lisa. But this, here's the angst. But, but this, I, I, wait a minute, wait a minute. I wouldn't have done this. If, right, if I my dad wouldn't have done it. I everything all right. I showed all my plans and everything. This That's where conditions. The no. issues for, your, for that septic system had a perpetual condition that required any homeowner, present or past, and I'm going to pause you right there. So if my dad went to the town and said, hey, I'm building this, I need a permit, what was the first thing they should have done? Go to the commission. They didn't do that. This is why we are in this mess. This is his anger. Because guess what? If we can't come up with the, the money to cover what Brandon has for us to mitigate, my parents are out $55,000. That's why we're pissed. Brandon will take care of it. I get it, but is it 2,000, 1,500, 15,000? I cannot answer that. Come on, we'll go. I don't, I don't understand what the distance is. I will, I will, I will. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a regular history. order of condition. But he, 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 he died, my brother died in 13. But it's history that says whoever takes over the property must follow certain instructions. You took over the property. Yeah. Evidently, you never got a copy because he died. You didn't get a copy of that, but that should have been in the deed, say, telling you what to do and what well, not the to deed do. Was never changed. I guess it was a. Well, uh, Frederick's handle. He's the lawyer on it. He, he did the deed. Uh, matter of fact, yeah, he's changed. I don't think he's changed it all over yet, but he, he handled all the papers. It's a sad thing that it happened. But well, I thought it was kind of a low blow, you know. You know yeah, but you yeah. read that and you and, and and it'll make sense for, for us. You will make and you it'll too. make sense in what we did. All uh, right. Okay. No. Thank you. Take care. Thank you for hiring someone. Lisa called someone. today, didn't she? Yeah. Okay, she'll call you back. We're not going to deal with it now. Okay. Thank you. Bye, Brandon. Bye, Jeff. Okay. Clearing the place out. Uh, Brandon. Wow. Yeah. What? Handicap exit. Huh? Handicap exit. Yeah, there's a handicap oh, exit. Yeah, but oh, no, this is closer. She can do a couple stairs. All right, yeah. just be careful. The, there was uh, yeah. there was some water there before. I don't know if there's it's salt. Still there. 
be better off if she were not here. They said no. The daughter said no. Yeah, just 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 watch her back when she hits that slab that's wet. It should be frozen by now. <laughs> Oof. Okay, Horton Street? Oh. Yeah, 2050 Horton Street, Lisa. Mm -hmm. We received a letter um, from the abutter, which you all have copies of. We do. Okay. In response to that letter, we wrote a letter ourselves. to the Brimmers. So my letter was dated December 29, 2021 to Anne Elizabeth and Robert Brimmer at 2050 Horton Street regarding possible wetlands violation. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Brimmer, we are writing to inform you of a complaint of possible wetland violation on your property at 2050 Horton Street, map seven, lot 26-2 under the Wetlands Protection Act and Dighton Commission Wetlands Protection Bylaw. I've included a copy of the complaint for your, your review. The Conservation Commission requests the authority to work, walk on your property to investigate. I ask that you respond to me with an answer to the above request to walk your property to investigate said complaint by January 14, 2022, and that did happen. And then I said we will discuss the complaint and any of our findings at the January 20, 20th, 2022 Conservation Commission meeting to be held in the upper level of the Old Town Hall, 7 p.m. Please plan to attend this meeting. You can email a response to me. Sincerely, Dighton Conservation Commission, Lisa Caledonia, Conservation Agent, and I cc the Board of Selectmen and the Building Commissioner, um, and I also copied, gave the Brimmers a copy of the formal complaint, which um, I should read for the record. December 13th, 2021, addressed to William Frenette from Wilton Ribeiro, property owner of Parcel 7, Lot 26, Address 1127 South Main Street, Fall River, Mass, 02724. Formal complaint of unauthorized stream alteration on parcel 726-2. Dear Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairman, and Conservation Commission members, I am the current owner of the vacant lot off Wharton Street, identified as Map 7, Lot 26, in the town of Dighton, Mass. I recently had the opportunity to walk the boundaries of my property and took notice of a man-made alteration to the stream on the abutting property to the east of my property. The stream in question also flows on my lot. Correction, it flows from his lot. In fact, it crosses my entire property from a point in the western boundary of my lot approximately 1,000 feet north of Horton Street and meanders in a southeasterly direction to flow across to cross my eastern boundary at the point approximately 100 feet north of Horton Street into the abutting lot as previously mentioned. My visual observations while on the ground of the man-made structure in, this, in the stream appeared to be within the stream and possibly impeding the flow of the stream so some, ex so some extent. In an effort to confine my observations, I engaged an engineering consultant to obtain further visual images of the stream alterations using a drone flown entirely over my proper property. The images obtained revealed at least two man-made structures located within the stream, and I have further confined that these structures are visible on publicly available aerial imagery and date back to no earlier than September 2021. As this discovery was of concern to me for the potential impacts to my property, I made inquiries with the Dighton Conservation Commission office and was told that there is, is no notice of intent on file for the stream alterations work performed 
on the adjacent lot, which is not what I said. I gave him a copy of the entire folder, and yes, there was a notice of intent and an order of conditions, but possibly not for this portion of the alterations that were made. Okay, therefore I have no reason, I, no, I have reason to believe that the man-made structures were constructed in the stream in violation of the Mass Wetlands Protection Act. I also have reason to believe that the structures located within the stream were intended and have in fact impeded the normal flow of the stream and have resulted in an, a measurable impoundment of the stream waters to create a small pond. I was advised by my consultant that this man-made impediment has also likely caused a backwater that has affected the normal hydrology of my lot since the alterations of the stream are in close proximity to my property. It was explained to me that such an impoundment, having acted as a dam in the stream, will tend to create higher stream levels greater potential for flooding and higher groundwater elevation than would normally occur naturally if the stream flow were not impeded. Since there appears to be no notice of intent for the stream alterations and an apparent violation of the Wetlands Protection Act, I am requesting that the Dighton Conservation Commission initiate an investigation into these unauthorized stream alterations. I trust that the Conservation Commission will respond to my request within seven days and I look forward to further information to be provided by the Conservation Commission regarding this matter. I thank the Commission in advance for re reviewing the situation and acting immediately upon this matter and I await your response. Thank you. Sincerely, Wilton Ribeiro. Just for the record, Wilton Ribeiro is also the gentleman who bought Mr. Pavo's lot, who we, sh we issued the enforcement Enough, order yeah. to. Okay. Um, so here tonight we have Mr. Brimmer, uh, Jim Digits and I did walk the property yesterday and um, you know, why don't we hear from Mr. Brimmer first. Your turn. I never did this before so <laughs> be patient. <laughs> um, I did make the uh, stream wider. I made the stream about three feet wider. The water actually flows from Lopes, which is uh, previous is on the other side of this gentleman's lot. It comes down through his lot, and then it comes down through my lot, and then it goes across Horton Street, and then down through Steve Adams' lot. So he's saying that the water goes uphill. The water, the water can't go uphill. So what I did was I taped and uh, Jim and Lisa came out and looked at the streams that are coming off of uh, Gilly Lopes's lot, can't, can't coming off of the lot uphill from, from me, and all the streams are flowing into this gentleman's lot. Now, with that said, uh, 14 years ago when I went to build in this lot, my, I wanted to buy both lots. Shore Environmental um, is a big company, and the guy who runs it is a good friend of mine. So I asked him if he can come down and, and do a, uh, a survey of it. Just as a friend, come take a look. So he looked at both lots. He said you would have an 80%, 70% chance to build on this lot that I built on. He said, you'll have a 0% chance to build on the, uh, the uh, other lot because of all the streams going there. So we walked all the property because I wanted to buy it for my son. I actually talked to Charlie a few times and there's just no way to build anything on the lot that he wants. So what happened was, I, he did, the water doesn't go up. So if anything, I'm actually draining his lot at a faster pace than what it should be. So if you want me to put the fill back in, the, his lot will drain actually slower and, his, and the wetland will expand the, on his lot because it's all coming into my lot. Which, what's happening right now is my lot is actually getting more flooded because a culvert that goes across Horton Street is smaller 
than what it originally was. So when the town put the culvert across, uh, the drain across Horton Street, they actually put a smaller drain. So the back of my lot is getting more filled because of that. But it, I don't have any issue with that because I don't want to build anything back there. I don't want to have any, and that used to be all upland, but it's now not upland because the water doesn't cross over to Stevie Adams property. That, you, you say the town put a smaller culvert in than what was originally there? Yeah. Really? Yeah, about um, five years ago. But I, I'm not complaining. Okay. I own all that land where the culvert is. Yeah. I own all the land all the way to the gas line in the back. The land, I have photos, the land used to be drier, used to be dry, and now it's all flooded. And I'm fine with that because I don't want to build anything over there. Um, but with that said, when I heard the excavator in the lot on the side of me, I went over and talked to the gentleman. And I said, what are you doing? And he showed me a building permit. And he said, he showed, on his phone, he said, I'm building a house. I said, how are you building a house? You, have, you never went to the Wetland Commission because there's no sign out here. There should be a sign with numbers. I mean, I don't know a lot about wetland or anything, but I know that there should be a sign with, with numbers. And he said, mind your own business. And I said, you can't just come in here with an excavator and start ripping stuff down. And he was pretty aggressive, and, which I don't really care. Um, but he was pretty aggressive, and he said, if you give me any problem, I'm going to tell him that you made a pond in the back. I said, first of all, he said, I opened a stream up three feet. I said, so I made more wetland than what there was. But I'm happy to fill it three feet back in. I said, second of all, you can't just rip through. His, his intent was, and I found a building plat paper from him, and I talked to the wetland lady who mocked that lot. His intent was to rip the road through before anybody's seen it, get rid of as much wetland as he can, come to your board and say, this land is all dry and whatever water is here is because of whatever and then put a whole plot in there. So he's mad, and he told me he was mad, and again, he was aggressive, and he, he said, you know, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do. And I said, well, you're not gonna do it because I'm gonna make some phone calls and I'm gonna stop you. Because he, again, he had the big excavators just ripping down stuff, put loads of dirt were coming in on a Sunday. He was just doing whatever he, he was doing. So, Prior to, two weeks before, or three weeks before, the wetland lady went in and she's mocking where I expanded the stream. She's mocking the stream at four feet wide. And you can see, and as Jim and Lisa saw, the stream some places 30, 40 feet wide, depending on where it is. Some place it is narrow, but she ju they just went right down the line at four feet. And the flags on both sides. So, because he needed the additional land in order to put the plat, if you saw his paper, you would see, he needed the additional land in order to put the cul-de-sac and the plat and everything. So he purposely flagged it this way. And I told this girl, I said, you're flagging in the wetland. She said, I was told by this gentleman. Read it. Uh, uh, Wilton uh, Ribeiro, sorry, I can't see, <laughs> that, this is the paper that I had to flag according to. So I'm flagging according to that. And that's who he's paying me. So he's paying me, so I'm gonna do what he says. None of your business. Okay, I said, but you're doing something that's illegal and your license is gonna be on the line. I don't know if, there's a, if it is or not, I just said that. Um, and so she went and she flagged it according to whatever she, she did. So then Jim and Lisa went through the lot and pretty much where I said there was wetland, they pretty much are saying, yeah, this is all wetland. So he's, he now is trying to punish me to, because I, I did open it. I'm not gonna, it's there as obvious as can be. I opened it up three feet, um, maybe many, four feet. How many years ago was that? 14, uh, 14 years ago. Um, so it's all grown back in. I sent Lisa a video of my dog playing in this thing uh, 10 months ago, which he said I just did it two months ago. But it, and all the vegetation has all grown. My dog is 
wading through the vegetation. You wouldn't even know it if you saw it, if nobody said anything. So my dog is wading through the vegetation to catch a stick because we go back there and we play. Okay, I'd like to hear from Lisa and Jim. Oh, okay, no, that's good. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely a widening of the stream and there's a, a, a what, you have, what kind of footings do you have in there to cross that? There's uh, cement uh, footings, and it's only because I learned about square box culvert, um, and you always make it wider than what it should be. So basically, I built a square box culvert wider than what the stream was um, out of cement. So, and again, I built it higher, and I built it wider than what the stream was. So the water actually is flowing into the backside of my lot, and that is why it's flooding more. And then it should have flown across the street and then went into Steve's, but it doesn't because the COVID now is smaller, which is fine. Again, I don't care. My my lot is flooding out and that's, um, it's 600 by 1500 feet that is wet where it was never wet before. But I'm good with that because I don't want anybody building around me. So that that's fine. But that's what's going on. I, don't, I damage myself. I didn't damage anybody else. So, so, I mean, as part of this, Mr. Ribeiro notified the EPA, and the EPA has to follow up on all their complaints. So this went in. The file is a wetlands complaint from Mr. Ribeiro. Um, the EPA emailed me and asked me to keep him apprised of, you know, when we have the site visit and all, and told me that um, he hasn't heard... I followed up with him today, told him we were out there, told him that I felt that if we ask him to fill in the edges of the stream at this point, it's gonna do more damage than anything. What I would like to see is plantings along that bank that's exposed, there is one bank that's exposed, um, and possibly him to stop tilling the back field, which would- Tilling? Kill, yeah, till, tilling it. Till, rototilling it in and planting. If you just left that side alone, that would make me happy. However, however, we've got the Army Corps that's going to come back and tell him to do whatever they're going to tell him to do now. And it could be years before they, because they haven't even responded to anything. So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, let me, uh, we saw wetland flags. And where these wetland flags were, well, this, many of them. This is when we were stand when we were standing on his lot, looking over the other lot. But right now we're talking about his lot, so. Okay, but I'm even dealing just n near that uh, stream, even uh, near the border. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, they were in the middle of the wetlands uh, where I couldn't even walk. I would have been, you know, up to my knees in in water. Okay, or, so this or, is the lot adjacent to him. Well, it it bored. It kind of. They one flows into the other. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm and, and, you property know, I, line is is what we determine. Yeah, no, I, I know who's lot that. is who. But uh, uh, I saw the water flowing so well. I did not see even where he made the even where he made the uh, the his little uh, car, uh, bridge. I didn't see any impediment. That water was flowing, and if anything, it was. I would think that it was draining the lot upstream more than what it would have if it was not opened up. Um, did he have two little ponds there? Yes. Were they done legally? No. But now we're going to hear from the Army Corps and the Army Corps will instruct us or EPA will, will instruct us on what to do. Okay. Because since, they, since they're involved and they're going to have the, uh, uh, the voice. Lisa? Are yeah. you going to have conversations with the, uh, uh, the EPA the gentleman that wrote you the letter? I did. Yeah. Oh, wait. He didn't. He just sent me an email. Let me see yeah. here. I'll, um, I'll go into it. Oh, Lisa, don't cover your mouth, please. <clears throat> I got to get one of those clear masks. All right. Here we go. His name is Raymond Put Putnam. Um, okay. Um, so I said, 
Hello, Raymond, one of the commission, conservation commissioners, and I walked the site with the owner. He admitted to doing that work, and he said it was about 14 years ago. The part he didn't admit to was the stones placed in the stream. It appears these were there prior to him. He tills the portion past the stream and plants vegetables. We asked him to spread rye on the open, disturbed area. I spoke to him about planting some shrubs along the western bank. We asked him to attend our meeting to further discuss the stream. My concern is that filling in and narrowing the stream would create more problems due to the fact that it has established now. Did you reach the Army Corps? And his response today was, Hi Lisa, thank you for the update. I did reach the Corps, but haven't heard back. They have been very slow as of late. I should hear soon. I can also look to see if I can pinpoint the dates of the work more precisely via aerial imagery. Are your meetings via Zoom? Zoom? If available, I would try to join the meeting remotely. I do understand your concerns about requiring the removal of the ponded area, and I need some additional information to decide how to move forward on my end. Once I hear back from the Corps, I will likely send a letter to your office. Thanks, Ray. And I say hi. Unfortunately, we are, um, we are meeting in person at this time. And we have several members that are hard to hear, so they're shying away from Zoom. I'm hoping we can figure something out going forward. But keep me in the loop. That's it. Okay. So <clears throat> as of right now, nothing is... We're, we're waiting for, for yeah. instructions. Could I approach the bench? Can you what? Could I approach the bench? Sure, I, absolutely. I want to... Well, I don't know how to do it. That was work. the first time I heard that. I don't know how to do this work, so I don't want to... Judge, yeah. Judge Charlie and... <laughs> <laughs> this uh, book has all the information on my lot and his lot. Really? Yes. So if you look at my lot, you'll see this, the stream here and you'll see that there's no vegetation there. If you look at his lot, where he wants to go, you'll see that there's all vegetation and a stream actually runs closer to Horton Street. It runs down and runs closer to Horton Street. And this is where he has gone in and he wanted to rip through here and then come around here for the cul-de-sac. You can see that this was, and now this is 14, this is 710, uh, 2006, is it? Yeah. I can't see too well. Um, but you can see that this was all wetlands. This is, uh, Gilly Lopes owns all of this. The water all runs down here, right into here, and then it runs out this way. He's saying that the water is running up this way. So it, it's impossible to run up. Run oh, no, no, there's a guy that did it. <laughs> Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> No, he did not. He only moved the water. <laughs> no, Moses. How do you know it was a guy? Wait a minute. Never mind. No, we're not going to <laughs> This right here is this gentleman's uh, property. Back, uh, again, this photo was taken. This is the edge of my property and the beginning of his property. And this is his wetlands. And this is what he's saying was never there. And, it, and this is a photo from 14 years ago that shows that 14 years ago it is here. Now, you, I presented a book, one of these books, when I went to do the delineation and everything. And this book shows everything about the dirt, everything about the wetland, every screen that goes through it, it shows everything. And it, it'll show that his lot, you can't even build a cottage on. Because if you could, I would have done it for my son. And, and the only reason why I'm really here is because he wants to aggravate. He wants to bust my ass. He wants to punish me. Because I didn't let him just go through with the excavation. And he was ripping trees and he was digging and he was... And, so and yet he is correct in that you altered the stream. I right? altered the stream. So, my, so we're going to have okay. to see what, what comes of that. In, or you're going to have to see. Right. In two um, items we have, but if you look we at have this, Mr. Ribeiro's yeah. lot in two items. So yeah. if we could stop talking about Ribeiro, because we've got to talk about him in two items anyway. Okay. okay. So if you look at the width of this stream right here, um, this width maybe comes out three more feet here. 
So if you actually could do whatever, it comes out three more feet. It looks exactly the same, but three feet wider. That or four feet, maybe four feet in some areas. How deep are those little ponds? Those on uh, either side, near the side of the bridge. Four feet, three feet. And they they are that way all year long. Yes. Yeah. And I can show you. My, I got a because video you know, of my dog, which I sent to Lisa. Swimming in yeah. it. In, in we're, we're, well, good. we're good. We're good. We're going to deal with your lot. We're going to, they're going to take care of your lot first. Okay. And uh, uh, we know quite a bit about the lot uh, next door. Next door. We've, we've had people working on it for a long time, years ago. Yeah. I mean, I tried to build. I mean, I know okay. one of the best companies so in let's the industry. Just, let's just... Uh, uh, the, the complaint is in. We're waiting for the Army Corps uh, to respond, and until that happens, uh, nothing's going to happen. Do you want me to get the Army Corps? Because I can get this company, who again, I'm friends with the one of the head guys, and this is a gigantic company. They could be better off. Yeah. Until 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 they let, let, yeah. yeah let it go that way. And she can yeah. explain to him on the phone what she saw. Okay. I think it'll be a lot more helpful well, than trying to you do it yourself. They might okay. want a site visit, and we'll go do a site visit. Okay. Yeah. They got a and the water was originally where I have the bridge. The water was in the summertime. Very well, it shallow. depends upon the year too. I mean, yeah. we. Uh, it depends actually, upon the year. This, is, this has but been I a used wet to go year. Across there with the tractor and rode a hill up the back because the back was all dry. Um, so the only thing I did was I put a bridge in and I'm still continuing rototill in the back. And okay. like Jim said, I said I was doing some planting. He said, yeah, because you're planting uh, food plots for deer. <laughs> That's neither here nor there. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we'll just, we're just going to hold this and, and, and whenever it comes up again. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'll update the commission at the next okay. meeting. If you'd like to come, you can. All right. So uh, am I in trouble? I do like you want me to do anything. I can put a jail cell, so don't worry about it. Oh, cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for anything that I did that was wrong. Okay. Lisa. Oh yeah, the oil spill. So we had um, a situation where the fire chief reached out to me. Um, okay. So this was last Thursday. Data that off the top of my head. Oh, January 13th, there was an oil spill at the clubhouse. Um, so I have several photos, but in a nutshell, what happened was uh, there was a tanker that was parked at the end of the cul-de-sac near oh, the sure. near the wet basin um, up on Hunters Hill, and. <clears throat> It fro the pipes froze and leaked. I think they determined it was somewhere around maybe 500 gallons total, but some of the neighbors intervened and of course the fire department came late night. And the next day is when I was contacting me and Todd Pilling went out there. I took a bunch of pictures and then um, the LSP that's involved had to take pictures as well, but these were the ones he sent and I can show you the ones I took. But, um, and then this is the outlet. Yeah. The outlet of. Uh, I, I saw all them yesterday. Yeah. You can show Jim and Charlie. No, I, I was up there and and I didn't and even see any oil when I was there a no. couple of days ago. Sure, they had cleaned it up that well already. Yeah. These I couldn't smell it. Couldn't smell it. Or just very, very faint smell of diesel. These are the photos I took. So one right in the catch basin. Directly into the out into the wet basin. Well, I think the ice, according to the guy, the the ice prevented it from from flowing. Uh, Being, yeah, really. Into the into the catch basin. So we're gonna. I asked him for an update for our next meeting. So he's gonna update us at our for our next meeting. I asked him. You know, he could possibly come to the meeting. So, oh, who yeah. did you ask, Lisa? The licensed site professional. He's in charge of overseeing the cleanup to make sure okay. that it's in compliance. Um, oh, okay. I know who. Yeah, I know. Okay. 
What's next? Zero, Zero Hot Street. Street. Lot, map 19, lot one. Okay, so that would be, no. there's no further response from those people. I haven't seen any more work being done out there, but they didn't respond to our letter. So um, the next step is, if you see, we see any more work out there, we should, um, oh, it is an enforcement order. We did issue an enforcement order. So I say, you know, we have to, we can find them. But um, as of right now, we're not getting any response. And I don't have another way to reach out to them unless you want to have something But you, you sure about the address? Um, yeah, zero. You know, you, 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 when, you send it, when you send a notification to them, you do it return receipt requested and- Yes, yes. Are they receiving and the- Yes, originally I sent it to the previous owner. The assessors corrected me and I sent it to the new owner. Um, so yeah. Okay. Well, maybe we ought to start applying a fine to see how that we, we've never done it before, but we should try to we should try it well, and see how to, it works. We used to do it. Remember, we used to fine. I had books of fines I gave out to some one gentleman. Remember? No, oh, I don't. Yes, 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 yes. JP. Oh yeah. Well, he can't pay you when he's in jail. <laughs> All right, so the next item is um, Zero Horton Street, which is the Ribeiro property. Okay. Um, so we issued the enforcement order, sent it to the correct address. Um, Fall River. Issued on December 16th. Um, <clears throat> you guys all signed it. And in response, we did get a letter. What was uh, that, Lisa? We did get a letter in response. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so it's a long one. I. I you guys each have one okay. in your folder. It's three pages. Oh, yes, I have one. Can yes. I read, a, read the end paragraph? Says it all. Okay, go ahead. I, I was that. advised by, because it's stuck, you know, it's just. Yeah. I was advised by my professional consultant team that we need to respond to this violation notice. So to that end, I am letting you know that we have removed the excavator from the site and have ceased to do any other physical work on the site that would involve excavation. We will begin preparing a restoration plan for what you have indicated as an activity in violation of the Wetlands Act and will try to get the submitted within 60 days. We trust that you will agree with us that we cannot do anything on site till at least March. Therefore, we request that this letter be accepted as our formal response to this enforcement order with provisions that will allow us to have the time to submit the proposed restoration plan and, and obtain conservation approval for the plan while awaiting at least 90 days for implementing the actual restoration. Respectfully, Wilton Ribeiro. So, you know, I mean, we obviously have to give them time for that, but I don't want us to overlook this because this was a- We won't, we won't overlook it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's there's so much wetlands to the. I'm trying to think is that that north or east? Uh, north. North. The and north. south. And east and west. There's, yeah, there's wetlands it's every. It's a huge well, swamp. He's got. There's a little tiny pocket of uplands, a little pocket, but it's insufficient to do anything. Right. I mean, that's so. That's the reason we issued the enforcement order because. I know. We've been asking for a plan that showed that he had enough room to perk. And they can't produce that. So in the meantime, they did what they did and can't, can't keep doing that. So um, do, you want, yeah, yes. do you want me to respond to him in writing? No. No? Not necessary. 
his, he said he's going to follow up within 90 days. So that's going to be March. He had a 90 day uh, figure, uh, date, uh, timeline in there. Nancy, do you have a copy of the agenda? No, I don't. Okay, is there anything? Um, I wanted to speak in the public input as a follow up to the Stormwater Committee meeting. Oh, okay. okay. All right, well, um, we have one, we have a couple more enforcement orders, uh, violations, I should say, and discussion items to discuss, so. Um, what, what about these folks here? They've been very patient. Yeah, right? yeah, we should, we should. That's next on the agenda. Okay. You have to step down. I know. Now we don't have a quorum to. Well, that's next. You are taking over. Okay, um, enforcement order issued uh, for 578 Hot Street. Um, Lisa, you want to give us an update on that? Um, yeah, I was contacted by the neighbor, um, Mr. Frenette, uh, that <clears throat> there was some silt runoff. I went and took some photographs. Okay. So the only thing you can do right. is adjourn, but since you have other items, you're going to have to continue this unless you can get another person to turn up here tonight. You've got to have three people sitting there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 We're going to have to hear it next uh, month. Oh, okay. After all that time here, huh? Uh, um, two hours. Well, I, I just wanted to say one thing about them while you're here. Um, they did submit an as-built plan. I am in receipt of an as-built plan. Okay. If you would like to discuss something relative to a plan they submitted, Nothing that directly involves a member of the committee, commission, whatever, you can proceed. If anything is going to come up relative to a member of the commission, mm. you can't yeah. proceed. It, Under the open meeting law, you must have a quorum. All right, then one steps down, quorum is gone. They only have a quorum right there tonight. If there were only two people sitting there, this whole meeting would have What? Do you have anything else to say that it's not related to Bill? Not not so far as uh, no. 578 Hart Street, no. Okay. Sorry to have, waste your time. Have to continue that. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, Lisa, where is 578? Across the street from me. Directly across the street? Yeah. I thought Duart was across the street from you. He is. So that wasn't Duart. Yes, it was. Oh, it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was. Yep. That was Duart's. Okay. I didn't. I didn't recognize him. Time for new glasses. <laughs> All right. Um, new glasses, you couldn't see it? No, no, I, I, I'm just saying that, uh, although these are getting bad. 2006 County Street, David DeRosa. Right here. Enforcement order and a letter issued 4121. Yeah, we don't, we don't have anything. Uh, you don't have what? We don't have anything from him as far as he was 
when he came in with the woman and we asked them to give us a plan, we haven't gotten anything. Which, to be frank, I mean, I think at this point on that project, no new, no news is good news. It's just kind of a stalwart kind of a project. You know, there's no additional fill being. Yeah, no, I know. Just, I, I hear you. It's just naturalizing. Okay, let's go to that, what, 1566 Cedar? Yeah, I do. I do have. Um, so I received a draft plan from them. And um, Stephen Schmiel is the wetland scientist. He's been. Who? Stephen Schmiel. Okay, I know Stephen Schmiel. Yeah, he's the wetland scientist. Yeah. And he is. Schmiel's the one who's doing uh, Cedar Street? Yeah. He's working with Zenith. And I guess Zenith has been swamped, to say the least. But in any case, um, we're making progress on um, a plan as far as restoration goes. Uh, the narrative is ready. The only thing they need to make sure they have is the numbers in place. And we've, we've gotten to a point where we've decided that they're not going to go before, they're not going to file it, the restoration as a notice of intent. They're just going to come to us for the restoration. That's the easiest and quickest way to go. And then we'll phase it if we have to. But the gentleman that owns the house wants to put an addition on. And he knows that he can't do that until this is done. Okay. All right. But I will follow up with Stephen so he can follow up with Zenith. Is this the guy that you're going to get? From yes. Shme How do you spell that last name? Hmm? How do you yeah. spell the last name? Shmiel. I don't know. I get okay. it wrong every time I try it. It's S C H M I E L, I believe. No, it's C H M I E L. I know, I thought it was S too. Yeah. Well, if he's so busy, how is he going to get this work done? It's, not, it's not him. It's um, it's Zenith Engineering. Oh. It's the engineering firm. <coughs> so, do you want me to tell him that the commission discussed this project? this restoration and we would like to see at least at a minimum um, uh, preliminary what a preliminary restoration plan yes absolutely yeah, okay by our next meeting yep 217 okay. sounds good let me just send this off Um, as, as far as the next item, do you want to talk about the next item now? Yeah. <clears throat> you want to read it off? 2371 County. Okay. Um, I have not gotten any response, uh, no more calls or emails from the lawyer since our last meeting, which I believe their, their MO is they want to see the other abutters along the entire. Uh, well, that's not their call. Right. No. They want to, right. They want to see us notify them as well. Um, so I think we need to light a fire a little bit maybe tell them that we're going to start finding them. I don't know. We need to well, do something. I told him he was dragging his feet when, last time he was here. I know. He, he keeps a on months asking ago. the same, same questions every time, and, and then he goes back and he doesn't do anything. Yeah. So we have to make a decision. At the Stormwater Committee meeting yesterday, um, we again discussed this. I now have the list of additional complaints and the stormwater committee will be sending out letters to everyone on that list asking them to attend the next stormwater committee meeting because we need to talk about uh, illegally filling the railroad bed so um, we'll be meeting the day before you so uh, Mrs. Caldonia will have an update or Mr. Frenette will but we're 
we'll um, send the letters out and see if they show up. Uh, I'm thinking there's at least two others and there could be more than that. I don't have the list with me, but I have the map with the lot number and all of that. So, so I think the next step is the stormwater committee is going to send the notices and then you'll hear at your next meeting whether or not they showed up at our meeting. Okay, so we, we could do the same. But is, is, Mr., is Mr. Mitchell going to be invited? What was that? A lot of it's He's, not. I think what we're, since their position with the stormwater committee is the same, if you don't um, take action against everybody, we're not doing anything. So uh, I'm sure we're going to notify the attorney for the first party that was complained about and say they're invited to the meeting. And again, if they don't show, then Stormwater is going to have to determine what the next step is going to be because it's illegal filling. Yeah. And, you know, right. so we're, we're you, well, you were at the site visit, so you know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Okay, next. 2560 Elm Street, a complaint. Um, so what a, that area that was disturbed along Elm Street, I'm just monitoring it. The woman said that she was throwing down some rye. So I haven't seen anything growing there yet, but. Not in this weather. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I know. Now I know where you are. Sure. Okay. I'm just monitoring it. They haven't been in there at all. They put the driveway up where it used to be in front of the barn or it, out of our dirt. Well, they put in a new driveway up Put in there, a new yeah. driveway. But it's outside of our 100 foot. I, huh? I measured it on screen. It's outside of 100 foot. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah. Sure. All right. 1035 William Street. So, yeah. This one's, this one's dragging on a little too long. Um... I asked him if he'd have something for our next meeting, and he's the last time. Let's see. This is across from Under the Sun. Mm, yeah. Across from where, Jim? Under the Sun reads. Oh, okay. He said no one will be at the meeting because I just got a quote back, and we will be proceeding with them. Maybe next month we'll have a better answer for you. So, um, you know, I know come spring he's going to want to move on doing some of his yard work. And, um, you know. Okay. Uh, you write down here this, uh, that 2560 Williams. Remember I went down, you, you had a complaint? Oh, possible. Oh, 2560. Yeah, um, we got a call. We got an email on that. Thank you. Well, that can go under other. Okay. Okay. Um, and then next one was the Beardos, um, which I need to follow up with them. That one is another one that's dragging on. Another one what, Lisa? Dragging on. Dragging on. Um, I heard from him on December 14th. He actually asked me, will he be on the agenda? And I said... Um, Where is 2396 Pleasant? Where is it? Yeah. Um, north of Hart. Between... May, adjacent to... Oh, behind 2371. Okay. I know where you are now. Yes. Yeah. They added on. They had a building permit. Yes. And they, they didn't everybody, with everybody us. gets one. They're within the, within the riverfront. Okay, so he just asked if he was on for the meeting and what's going on. Um, and, and well, he just did some brush. No, this is different. This is a different one. This is his neighbor. This is the neighbor to the north of him. Kuchumbawa? Next, no, it's south of Kuchumbawa. Okay. Yeah. So that's going to be right around on the back side of where the other enforcement order is filling yep. the uh, yep. filling the uh, tracks. Yep. Yeah, probably he'll get a letter also. And I explained, I called him and explained to him, you know, I said, when you get on the agenda, 
you'll know because you have to sign the application. So he was a little confused about the process. Um, and quite frankly, I think they're dragging their feet because they're afraid of any mitigation we're going to request. Okay. But um, in any case, I'll make make priorities to follow up. I just followed up with 1566 Cedar, and I'll make it a priority to follow up with 1035 and 2396, and then hopefully Mr. Mitchell will come to our next meeting after he hears what's going on at the storm order meeting. That's all I got. Okay, it's not all we have. Nancy's still here. Yeah. I'm sure she's got something she wants to discuss with well, us. Nancy's going to sleep late tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> it's only five of nine, look. We're doing well. Uh, this is a follow-up to the Stormwater Committee meeting yesterday. When I was coming in tonight, I believe the people from Hunter's Hill were walking out the door. Yeah. yeah. They got continued. Yes. Okay, at the Stormwater Committee meeting, it was yesterday, they gave out a um, plan, and Mr. Frenette was there, as was Lisa, and after considerable <laughs> discussion in their presentation, I found out the plan they gave us was not complete. As we found out dealing with solar farms, everyone should get the same plan and it should be the latest plan. Were you here when I said that, Tom? <sighs> no. Oh, I said exactly that. I said, we want, the, we want a detailed wetland delineation. We want all of us, all departments to get the same map because Lisa and I were there uh, late this afternoon and we found houses going up in wetlands on, on the newest map. So after, as I said, what I considered to be way too much time went by. There was confusion and discussion. Um, and I finally held it up and said, are you telling me that this plan is not the plan that everybody has? And the response was something like, no, we brought this one to you because basically they were saying, this is what we think you need. And I said, no. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. want one plan. The Planning Board, Conservation, the Stormwater Committee, the Building Commission of the Health Agency. Everybody gets one plan. Okay. They're all the same, and it's the latest plan, and it shows everything. We'll decide what part of that plan is stormwater, as will the other committees in that, like what's conservation, so forth and so on. So I think we went another five minutes, and I said, you know, we've spent enough time on this, so they had to come back. But one of the things that came out was that uh, Mr. Pilling said that he had requested uh, a plan and he had not gotten it. And Mrs. Caldonia said that they had sent something to her. Uh, or the, he, wanted to revi he wanted to review the revised plan. So he went right to town on it. So they weren't, I didn't get here in time or I would have asked to read the letter while they were present. But since Mr. Pilling went through the work of, if you will, crashing the review to have something ready for tonight. I just want to read it into the record. Uh, I'll give this to Mrs. Caldonia after so you'll have it. Again, we will, I believe, we'll be meeting with them at our next meeting, which is basically the day before. You're gonna meet with them if they come to your February meeting. So this is addressed to the Dighton Conservation Commission. It's dated January 20th, and it's about Hunters Hill Review of Revised Subdivision Plan. This office has completed a review of the subdivision plan filed with the Conservation Commission. There are several sheets in the plan set with several different dates in December 2021. The plan has, re been, has been reviewed for Dighton stormwater regulations. We offer the following comments. Test pits need to be performed in the presence of the health agent to determine water table at the locations of the proposed basins. Water table is identified by the USDA mapping to be between 18 and 37 inches below the surface, although these were, quote, wet basins, unquote, for pond sixth. Water table could be at elevation 142.0, which is 
144.0 minus 24 inches, but the top of the berm is 140. For pond two, water table would be at elevation 148.0, which is 150.0 minus 24 inches, but the top of the berm is 148. This will severely affect the storage capacity of the basins, leading to overtopping or continually convert groundwater to surface water. Basins will need to be reevaluated after the test pits are conducted. The invert into Pond 2 is elevation 142.0. The outlet is elevation 144.0. Hydraulically, this will cause problems upstream in the roadway piping system. The pond embankments are over six feet deep. This falls under the jurisdiction of the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation Office of Dam Safety. As the ponds are very deep, fencing should be considered. As the ponds always, will always be full of water, an access road all the way around should be provided for maintenance and public safety. It does not appear aquatic benches or safety benches are provided in the wet basins. Stormwater Standard 3 requires infiltration. As the soils on site are hydraulic group C and D, the infiltration standard only needs to be met to the maximum extent practicable. However, no infiltration attempt has been made on this project. Proposing to infiltrate sewage does not meet the standard as this water is being piped into the site. It is not rainwater. Documenting compliance for standard number three requires preparing a plan of the site, which identifies hydrologic soil groups and location of all test pits. There may be locations on the site where infiltration is feasible, other than where the sewage leaching is to be located. There are portions of the roadways cul-de-sac of Road C, station 24.00 of Road A, where the proposed cut is over 24 inches deep. The roadways need to be above the water table to avoid water bleeding onto or through the pavement. Either of these conditions could lead to freezing, causing a public health hazard. At this time, I do not believe this project meets DEP stormwater management standards. The groundwater is a serious issue and we need to protect the residents of the new homes as well as the town wetlands. It is imperative that the entire project concept from houses to driveways to streets to drainage systems incorporate best management practices in order to protect, in order to protect public health. Thank you. Todd M. Pilling, PE, Board of Health Agents, Stormwater Agent. So I just wanted to read that so as I said, he was at our meeting yesterday. He crashed this. This was going to be read tonight, uh, but since the uh, it was continued, I just wanted you to know what his initial findings are. Uh, as I said, there'll be more of this, I'm sure, at our next meeting. Well, he's not going to like us Thank you. in the future. Uh, Lisa and I, uh, Lisa gave me a call and I, uh, around 4 o'clock this afternoon, and I was on site in well, 15, 20 minutes. And we went to the north side of um, Clubhouse Road, and uh, there's a pathway, maybe for a roadway. Uh, according to the map, there is a roadway, and he's got it going right through the wetlands. Uh, there's a, a, a drainage trench, and the water is flowing around the next house on the east side. I mean, it's flowing, and down the drain th to the next and then out to that pond. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the maps that we that you had there, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, it showed two or three houses in that wetland. And I'm saying- Actually, what? these plans don't show any houses, it's just lots. Oh, but, lots, but okay, lots. But yeah, the problem is the delineation, obviously they missed this, so they missed, the delineation is inaccurate. Um, but in addition to that, they're not meeting the stormwater requirement. They're not meeting the stormwater requirements according no. to Todd, and they wouldn't let me read the, the letter. So now, now you um, you're going to talk to Brandon tomorrow. Um, uh, I mean, he's got to be told that that 
that site that we saw behind those houses there. Right. Oh, I, 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 I talked to him before the meeting, which oh, is why right. I think they continued the meeting, because they, they knew that between that and the stormwater issues, I don't think it had anything, the continuation, I don't know that it had anything to do with not having two members here. Did no, that, no, that was, a, that, the only thing with two members was um, Duarte. Mm. That was the only thing. No, I, they, they gave their reason for oh, the continuation. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Okay. Did I understand you to say you had planned to read that letter and they didn't want you to read it? Or right, right. I wanted to read it for the record and they said no. The they, people from? Yep, they said they didn't want us to even open the, discuss anything because there were two commissioners that weren't present that needed to be present. Okay, well, I'm glad I read it under public input. All right, so that gets her off the hook. Uh, but it was information I felt you needed because, quite frankly, when somebody goes out of their way, like Todd did, to really get those plans and get a preliminary report written in anticipation of the meeting tonight, and then to say, continue it, you know, we don't want that red. I have a problem with that, so. No, but essentially, I told them that I wanted an accurate um, map for all the wetlands that I wanted to see where the houses were going to be. Well, you don't need that. You don't need that. I says, yes, we do. When they said they had given us the map, the plan that they felt was appropriate <laughs> for the stormwater committee, yeah. that's when I said, no, we want a complete one. As a matter of fact, their engineer said, well, you're going to get these big papers with 20 some pages. I said, that's exactly what we want. I said, our history has been not with housing developments, but with solar farms. If you don't get a complete set of plans, then you don't get the whole picture. And that got us to the situation on Brook Street where the battery storage units weren't shown on the plans that went to the main people. Okay, so now I'm, okay, I'm, going, I'm going sticking with Hunters Hill. When we were at our cars, there were four or five women walking their dogs and they started telling us a little bit of the history before these people and talking about where land had been filled in to build houses. And they said, you know, uh, that that had adjusted the, the wetlands in the whole area. And uh, oh, and they said that the, the treatment plant now is leaking sewage. Well, they, they don't have a treatment plant. plant. Leaking sewage. They have a treatment plant. I know treatment plant. they have a treatment plant. But and so well, that's not what he told me yesterday. They're going to build a treatment plant. All they got well, well, now is they, the title five. No, their current this septic project system. is complete. They will need to build another treatment yeah. plant, a bigger, much bigger one in they a different area. But when I questioned it yesterday specifically, I said, "I know what a title five system is, which is what you said you are using. What do you mean by a plant? Is it a sewage treatment plant?" He says, "Yes, we're going to build one." He stated at our meeting what they have is a Title V, a big one. Well, so these people, was, these women said the system is leaking. Well, you did. You, you. I don't, don't ask me what, they, what that means. No, all I can tell you is what was stated publicly at our meeting because I questioned it. That was one of the things that I questioned. Okay. So anyhow, uh, uh, well, you have your public input for me. You know where the Stormwater Committee is on this and Looks like we're both committees are going to be busy. You know, and, you. and those houses that are up there are, are, are very, very nice, and it's probably something that's you know very worthwhile for the town. But gee, let's get it done right. I agree. I agree. Is it still an over fifty-five development? Yes. Yeah. But it's not a forty B. It's not a forty B. No, I don't believe so. Those houses so. look kind of nice to be 40 Bs. Well, I haven't heard that it was, but I always ask that question because sometimes they turn around. But I was just wondering if it was still was an over 55. Yeah. It is. It's a locked community. It's locked. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank but you. I can give you the number if you want to go up. <laughs> no? Okay. One of my main concerns yesterday were the ponds. Because when I saw some pictures, I said, what is all that water? And that's when I was told it was a, a basin. And I said, it looks like a lake. Well, it sort of is, okay? You, where the oil went? Yes. 
That, on yeah, that, right this there. water drains that we were we saw was flowing pretty hard, the, flowing into that pond. Yeah, the wetland was it was draining the wetland. Yeah, that's how I access it with my tractor. That's what I come in into that project. Oh, it's, from it's the not, uh, handling rainwater. It's draining surface water. I have now. I have to go between the two solar farms. <laughs> okay. Yep. Which is one more reason why it needs to be. It needs Thank you, Nancy. Always good to see from here properly. from you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Bill, let's see. You got to ask the public if there's any more questions out there. Uh. <laughs> I have a question. With COVID numbers going up. It's going to go down very soon. Oh, they're going down now, Lisa. Quit being a pessimist. I'm they're just, going down. Because Jim could have attended if we did a Zoom. Who? If we, if we had the option to do Zoom when we need to, Jim could have attended. Oh. But we don't even have the option. So if I got, if my kids were sick and I was home, I couldn't even attend via Zoom because we don't have the option. Well, not, how can we Zoom? We can Zoom. How? What who, do you mean? Who can do it? We did it last year. I know, but uh, how? I, 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 can you how? set it up and, and do the whole program? Cable does. Not from here, from our houses. There's a way to do a hybrid on here as well. Wait, oh, what'd she say? Oh, There's that's... A way to do hybrid. Oh. That means both With in that, person and... Uh, that would be Zoom. There's a camera on that TV. So, but what I'm saying is, so if we, if we opt to do Zoom and we want to stay at our houses, you can still... I'd have to come here. You know, what, what I have against Zoom is we can't pass around maps and see anything. And on my screen, if the, even if they show the map there, I can't see a darn thing. Okay, but that's the thing. Like, we can have paper copies. If we know we're going to be on Zoom, I mean, they give me all this paper. Um, I just think it's something to think about and consider because if you guys... How much notice do you need uh, to do that? A week? Um, do you, you don't set up your own Zooms, do you? Um, no. Leanne has been, Leanne used to do that. Um, I'm not sure if they'll make you get your own account, but if you don't, we have access to it, I, I would say a week's notice would be the most helpful. Yeah, and we need to make sure that we're notifying, say we had a new public hearing, we need to make sure those people, the abutters, are notified that way that, hey, it's going to be a Zoom. So, but um, you guys have to actually vote to adopt it as an option. You never did. You have, you have to vote to allow it to be an option. I see. Yeah, because right now you only voted to allow us to have only strictly in-person meetings. I just feel like we should have the option because I hate to... I mean, if our meeting was a couple weeks ago, I couldn't have even have come because my son was had all COVID symptoms. He ended up having strep. But anyway, this is, this is what happens, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Everyone yeah. is so afraid that, yeah. that, that, that you get the sniffles, and people are afraid they get COVID. If it's worse, uh, I just think it would be a good option. Even Jim said it. Jim said he wished we were doing Zoom because he could have attended tonight. Jim Sousa. Yeah. You know? Well, whatever. It's I'll my two cents. A motion. If, you, if somebody would make a motion to uh, adjourn. Oh. Well, uh, okay. To well, adjourn. I'm going to think about what Lisa had just said. Uh, do we want to have the option to whether we have just in person or or we could do it in person in Zoom? Not tonight. No. Not on your agenda. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but we, at our next meeting, can we put that item on there? Um, so that not by, every By meeting, our next meeting, COVID will be gone. Oh. It's never going to be gone. There's going to be five more variants. 
It depends upon what politician says what. Yeah, it does. Let's not be political statements. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't say it towards anyone. But it's not oh. even just COVID. I mean, anything could happen. I could break my ankle and be, you know, someone could be stuck home. You're discussing something that's not. Like if you <laughs> break the ankle, I'll go get this you. This is other uh, discussion. No, no, no. You, you, you've exhausted this guy. You're pushing the limit. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I make Better a motion adjourn. to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank motion you. Motion carries.